you going, Joe? Oh, I'm super excited for season three. Not only are we back on for more after our wee break, but we've got more exciting things coming right at you. A lot of different segments. Different. We've got our uh, MSB challenges that we're doing yes. this year. All sorts of challenges, all sorts of shoots, all sorts of shmazzling, mazzling things. <laughs> That's a word we, we actually checked on that first. It so. is. I Googled it. And of course, hope you've enjoyed the, uh, the the beach shots that we all did, the guys and girls. You've got to check it out because uh, make sure that you check out all the shots and things that we've been doing because it's getting hotter and more fab and, you know, that's just what's it's happening. It's a little bit sexy on Media Strikes Back this year, I think. Yes. Yeah. Tom, I heard you caught up with someone uh, a little bit sexy. Well, Yana and, Tim, uh, Yana and Tristan went to Sex Boat. Yeah, Tim was probably there too. <laughs> Tim was there. Uh, JD went to see The Blinder, the uh, the new AFL movie. Yep. And yes, that's right, I uh, caught up with Ella Hooper. So let's have a look. The Killing Heidi vocalist. Herself. Let's see her. Okay, so your, no, your new song, Low High. Yeah, yeah? Mm -hmm. this is my first new baby of my new album, having just gone solo. So this is the new era of Ella Hooper music. Taken the plunge. Yeah, I've taken yeah. the plunge. I don't know, it only took me like 10 years. Yeah. I've been in bands <laughs> since I was 13 and you know, Killing Heidi and then the verses. And then I took a little time to kind of figure out what I wanted to do next. Was it a long time coming? Did you always think you had a solo in you? Or you, like, how did that just come to you to say, I'm ready now to do it? It was a bit of both, like I think I've always had it in me, but I've never really had the time or the um, concentration for it. You know, I thought, yeah, that's there. I do write a lot of songs by myself, um, but most of the time in my bands, I was co-writing with Jess, my brother. Mm -hmm. So I felt like that was a more appropriate, you know, we'd use those co-written songs more than just my solo songs. And then as I got a little bit older, a little bit older, I was like, I think the time's coming, the time's coming. And then all of a sudden, it really came up like a volcano. And I was like, I have to do this now. And so the decision feels awesome, feels like the right one. But there's also a lot of pressure now because I've taken away those extraneous factors like other band members and even record companies. Like I've gone independent for this one. Yeah, so great. I could do whatever I wanted to do. I could yeah. pay for it myself and just really treat it as my project. I'm getting such an education, I'm getting yeah. what I wanted out of it. I wanted to be challenged and I wanted to be kind of woken up and to be in control. So yeah, so far so good. Great, so it's kind of an artistic freedom without as much pressure, but at the same time, it's all on you now. Yeah, so. <laughs> I didn't really think about that when I was like, I'm just gonna go solo, it'll be amazing, I'll get everything <laughs> my own way. And they're like, oh, well actually every decision, you know, whether it works out well yeah. or badly is kind of on you as well yeah, yeah. and that's why I'm just like really concentrating on choosing my collaborators carefully and yeah. hooking up with some great visual people to make sure that the the way the, the solo record looks and sounds and feels yeah. is right so I can share a bit of that responsibility around yeah. and low high which is just was that a bit of fun to make oh so much fun yeah. low high was the perfect first single because yeah. I wanted to kind of sum up how the record is different and I think when people hear Low High sometimes they're, they're often surprised that it's me. I'm singing in a different voice than people know me for. I'm singing a lot softer and a lot more kind of relaxed and yeah. it still has its angsty spiky moments which is one of my trademarks. Yeah. A little bit of angsty angst spiky. There. Yeah but then in general it's a lot more subtle yeah. um, so I'm really happy with the reaction to that. I made the clip with um, my photographer Wilk who's just an amazing creative force. Yeah it's lovely the black and white and everything. Yeah. It's a really nice, really nice clip. We wanted to strip everything back. Basically this record's about not having all the bells and whistles. Yeah. You know there's, there's still a few. Good that's good and of course you got to mention the like we were talking before it's in that realm of, what is it? Pre-apocalyptic pre pop. That's right, that's right. So if you're listening to Ella's things and you go, this is so pre-apocalyptic pop, then you've done your job. I made my is own genre. Right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's that's kind of how I feel about it. It's yeah. got this, um, a little bit of, 
foreboding about it, but then also a lot of exploration of darker aspects of my personality and also the year that it was when I made it, which was like about a year ago now. It was a very challenging year and I was at a challenging um, 27, 28, 29, sat and returning. Everything gets turned upside down and you Gosh. change your life, to, you make some weird life decisions and yeah. the record kind of deals with that. Great. Okay, good. So, Ella Hooper fans, post, no, pre-apocalyptic yeah, pop fans, pre Post, everyone. there's nothing. Everything's blown up. Everything's, <laughs> yeah. But this is a, an exploration and, yeah, great to, uh, looking forward to hearing the rest of it and, and Thank you. good luck with all the gigs. Thanks so much. I'll see you out there on the road. That's it. Wow, Tom, I, uh, I think I kind of understand wh why you're feeling this way about her Isn't now. Isn't she amazing? Yeah. Oh. She's she's awesome. We hope for all the best for Ella and thank you for the interview. It was, uh, it was really a privilege. And before that, I actually didn't know what... The, obviously, I knew Killing Heidi. But um, I was like, oh, who am I interviewing? Ella Hooper. Okay. And I was just so excited to interview someone you're, so You're not just excited, you're actually gushing. <laughs> like, you're, I've never seen you like this. You're really gushing and I think I need a mop or something because there's just so much Ooh, gushing. I'm going to take an Ella Hooper <laughs> cold shower. All right. Yeah, I think you do. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we'll do in the break, all right? We'll, yeah, let's we'll just go cool to the down break. a bit. Um, we will be back with JD, who's going to tell us all about Blinder, uh, the new AFL movie. So stick stay around. Put. Welcome back, guys. I've got the uh, always gorgeous JD here with me. How's it going, mate? I'm good, handsome yourself? Yeah, going very well. Going very well. Going very well. Excited for, uh, for what you're going to tell me about the, the blinder. Yeah, AFL season's coming up, and uh, what better way to kick it off than going to the premiere of the new AFL film Blinder? Now, who's in that? What do we what do we know about it so far? Who isn't in it? We've got the veteran actor Jack Thompson in there. We've also yep. got some some young up and comers, uh, including Bob Morley, who uh, I was lucky enough to go to school with. Um, and I think it's been 10 years since I've seen Bob and uh, just happened to be at the red carpet. So good to see that he's, uh, you know, stepping up the ranks and uh, he's getting off, a name. He's, uh, he's on the good path now. Is he? he certainly is. He's, he's a bit uh, of a rat bag back in the day, was he? He still, probably still is a rat bag, but uh, we'll, we'll leave that one out. So how was your summer before we get on to that? My summer? Ask. Fantastic. Um, a little bit over this heat, but otherwise I yeah. think we should uh, go check out the heat of the red carpet. Let's do it. You want to remember this moment? Yes! You want to be able to tell your kids what you did out there today? What price are you prepared to pay to write yourself into the history of this great club? Can you do it? Yes! Guys, here I am, and I have the legend Glenn Archer himself, who is also one of the producers of Blinder. Now, tell us, Glenn, how long has the process been of getting this movie from the ground uh, to where it is today here at the premiere of Crown? Yeah, from the ground level, it's been about 12 years. 12 uh, years. Scott Didier, uh, the writer and the uh, co-executive producer, he actually wrote it 12 years ago when he moved to Sydney. He missed his local right. footy club. Oh, so fair enough. He started penning all these things that he loved about his local footy club. Fantastic. Um, it turned into a story. Then he gave it to a script writer. He wasn't happy with that script, and he just went through this process and okay. showed me about three years ago. Yep. And uh, I loved it, so I got involved from there, and uh, right. and away we've gone. Now, um, tell us about the film and about your role as Mortz in the film. Um, well, Mortz is a, Mortz is an interesting guy. I think he's kind of, uh, along with Tom, they're both kind of touted to be the next in line to kind of go pro after playing with the Tigers and. Uh, and so, as, as some 20-year-olds I want to do, get into a little bit of trouble, and, and uh, I don't want to say too much, but yeah, there's some uh, pretty dastardly stuff that happens. So basically, the trials and tribulations of the uh, average AFL footballer. Yes, that's right, that's right. The average AFL footballer, and I'm sure the average 20-year-old uh, playing football in, uh, down in Torquay. It's, uh, yeah, it was, it was a, a great experience and, you know, uh, it, was, it was a really good character. I've never had to deal with something like this before, so it was, um, it was great fun, a good challenge for me. I, I play um, Rose in this and she's a breath of fresh air. She doesn't know anything about footy at all, which was kind of exciting for me because I know nothing about um, Aussie rules. Like, I know about league and I know about rugby, but Aussie rules always kind of um, was a way from my knowledge. Like I was filming Wild Boys and the dudes who I was living with would always be watching Aussie Rules and I kind of walk past and go, is it league? Nah, is it rugby? Nah. And then, so I never got into it. But then this happened and um, I was like, cool, that's a really great way of learning more about the Aussie culture, which I think is a, a great place here. Have you played AFL Rules football? We 
you, when I was um, in junior school, we had a Victorian PE teacher, and he just he just uh, he he he'd bring the footy out occasionally. But you know, before that, nothing. So we had three weeks to really learn the game, which was pretty yeah. daunting. You know. Okay. And was there an intense training schedule tied into that? Any what, sorry? Was there an intense training schedule that uh, got tied in to make sure it that was, you look yeah. like the part of a country football team? Yeah, I think it was just kind of up to us and Towdy, who was the football coach, just to get together when we had spare time. Yep. You know what I mean? So um, we did. We didn't want to look um, like we didn't know what we were doing. Um, so we, we, we trained as much as we could. Good to be back home and yep. uh, in the heartland of AFL football, which yeah, is absolutely. Uh, all about the film. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, and he's getting some kisses on the way. Nothing changes. Uh, that was our um, that was our coach. He trained us for the film. All oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How yeah. did the coaching go for you, Bob? Because you did play local football for the uh, was yeah. it the Titan Tigers? I played for the Titan Tigers That's and right. the uh, yeah the Woodend Hawks. Right. But um, yeah, I was kind of I haven't played for a decade, so I was dusting off the old boots and giving yeah Excellent. the good legs a good stretch. So yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, it was good. Nice to have you along yeah, for the premiere good. of Blinder. I'm very proud to be here. Very proud. Now this is your second AFL film. Yeah, it uh, is. You can start off with the club. Yes. And uh, bring it over to Blinder. How did you find the uh, transition? 30 years later, it's like a, a blink. Like a walk <laughs> in the park? Walk in the park. No, not really. It's, it's different. But at the same time, I drew on the experience I had in the club. And I drew on, on what I was taught by Hafey back then. And, 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 and Sam Kekovic, who tutored us uh, when we first started in the club, and who's one of the producers on this. Right. And who right. has a... Had a little role in the picture as well. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, JD, looks like you had a blinder there. I did have a blinder, no pun intended at all. A little bit intended. <laughs> <laughs> now, look, it was a great night. Uh, got to go along and, and meet a few of the stars of the film. Um, so, yeah, it was really good. And uh, it comes out on March 7th, so we're going. All right? Okay. Yep. You don't have a choice in the Aren't I invited? Yeah, yeah, you're invited too. Okay, come. Is there like a we're bromance thing going yeah, on? We've had like... a big summer, me and JD. <laughs> we have um, had a big summer. And if you've checked out, um, you got to check it out. Facebook.com forward slash Media Strikes Back. All our beach shots. We did a few. The girls did a few. Yeah, we did. Lovely Yana did a, a nice swimsuit shot. Thank you. Yeah, it was um, a wonderful summer, I thought, uh, for Melbourne. We had so many days in the 30s. I yeah. was always finding myself at the beach. And I think it was kind of yeah. screaming sex, wasn't it, Yana? There's, you know, girls in bikinis, I guess everywhere and guys also with minimal clothing at the beach <laughs> of course and yeah so that was sexy but what's even sexier is a little expo I went to recently with uh, our man Tristan uh, the Sexpo Expo the Sexpo Expo yeah, so. so Big T our producer yes. came with you he, uh, <laughs> he had to be involved in this one and congratulations as well to Tristan yes. Tristan yes. got married uh, over the break so well done Good luck <laughs> and all those things. But um, he came with you. How did the big man go at Sexpo? Well, you know, it's it's hard to kind of keep a straight face and, you know, be, I guess, really comfortable with everything going on. But, you know, it, it's, it's such an open expo. And, you know, end of the day, sex is a big part of life, is it not? Yeah. Lots of things going on there. I think there's a bit of something for everyone. So let's check it out. Yeah, let's. <laughs> Hello Melbourne, we are at the Sexpo Expo here in Melbourne. That's right, and you know, we normally film like Comic Con and we film some beautiful and awesome bands in Melbourne, but today we were thinking we want to do something different and show you, but I mean, the adult industry in Melbourne is still Melbourne culture, so we thought And Melbourne's we'll a pretty sexy city to be in. Sexy, glamorous, beautiful. So I think, I mean, I want to see what's in there. Like, Yana, have you been? I'd lie if I say I haven't. Yes, I have. And it's a very interesting day in there. There's a lot going on. There's a lot of novelties. Cool. I'm, not gonna, I'm quite excited. I want to see what's in there. But no, no, really. <laughs> Let's not give it away. Let's All just right. check it out and uh, fill you in a little bit later. <laughs> I have Nikki Goldstein, who's actually a sexologist. The first sexologist I've actually met in my life. So I've just taken your sexology virginity. <laughs> <laughs> my sexology virginity. So Nick is very, very talented and quite well known in the community uh, in the area of sex, which is something that's on everyone's mind, I think every single day. For some people, perhaps every minute of the day. Uh, Nick has actually studied human sex sexuality. sexuality. 
in San Fran, is that right? That's true. The kinkiest city in the world, apparently. There so we go. So there's no better place to study sex than in the kinkiest city of the world. So how would you rank Mel Melbourne in terms of kinkiness? Well, I'd fact, to say the fact that we have sex grow in Melbourne, and this is actually our home ground, so I think that's got to stand for something. This is the birthplace of sex grows, so, you know, you must be going up there on the scale of things. And I think Melbourne and San Francisco are sister cities, aren't they? I, I think there's some so. links, so, yeah. yeah. Yes, I'm, Which is I'm featuring with the amazing Alexis Texas and the legend Ron Jeremy. So it's been a lot of fun hanging out with them and uh, you may not know this, but I have had um, a little bit of sexy fun with Alexis Texas on two occasions. Oh wow. So filming for my website, AngelaWhite.com. <laughs> awesome. Uh, so it's great to hang out with her, having uh, been so intimate with her on other occasions. But I thought it's funny, in the adult industry, a tremendous amount of the guys are Jewish. Almost no women are. No kidding. Yeah, that's right. That's Gloria that's Leonard, uh, Nina Hartley, Heather Hart, Alexandra Silk, and I think I'm done. Uh, that's it. There's only like maybe 10, 15 Jewish girls around the world in porn. Hundreds of guys are Jewish. Yeah. They've done surveys and, and a lot of articles. Why? First of all, the dad would kill them. Right. Secondly, okay. they're stressed using the brains. The Jews stress college education. Well, Jenna Jameson, who's a Christian girl, made $13 million. Not bad. But, you know, so you, the girls can make big bucks doing porn. But Jewish girls want to do things more involved in mind and you know businesses and stuff. Just a choice of career. isn't it? And how is it to be working with like 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 a man like Ron? He's, I mean, he's a legend and he's been around. Do you feel nervous and all that? No, Ron is hilarious. Yep. He's such a character. He's got so much charisma. It's really great to have him on board, and he's got so many funny stories. And what do you think in terms of maybe just some tips, lastly, that you would like to leave us with? If it's well, getting a little bit mundane in the bedroom and, you know, you've tried all the posies. What else is in well, store? I think because we're at Sexpo and, you know, there's, we're bombarded by so many products and toys. The biggest thing is to looking at just changing one slight thing in your everyday behaviour. So we all have a bit of a sexual routine and we kind of slip into patterns and you don't have to go so far as to be a bondage master or anything like that. It could just be one thing different and one thing that surprises your partner and just takes them, you know, just keeps them guessing. So it might be a blindfold or a feather teaser or it might be a little outfit. What do you love about this industry? How long have you got? How much um, time do you have? Give me the short short version. Uh, the sex, the amazing sex. I so love you do that. something you love and get paid for it. Exactly. It can't get much better than that, can it? And I get to be around amazing people. Um, yep. And everybody has a similar mindset. Everybody's open about their sexuality and wants to explore it and express it. So it's really a great environment. Hey guys, we're here with Imogen and Keisha. Um, so guys, how's um, the expo for you guys so far? Uh, well, we've only just recently got here a couple of hours ago now, probably about an hour and a half ago. And so far it's getting busier and yep. I love Sexpo anyway because I work Sexpo Brisbane for Red Hot Pie as well. Mm. And it's just a ball to work yeah. at because the, everybody here just wants to have fun cool. and wants to be relaxed, so it's good. I'm standing with two very sexy men, Zach and Josh, are from, uh, where are you from? We're from Bad Boys Australia, we're from the Gold Coast. From the Gold Coast. Now, what's with all these people from the Gold Coast at Sexpo? I don't know, I guess Gold Coast is just a very sexy place. <laughs> it is pretty beachy, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Now, what's your specialty? Um, topless waiters. Yeah. That's our specialty. Uh, there's a few boys that do strip shows and as well. Um, they're good at it, so if you're around, check it out. Anyway, so what, what happened was I was walking here and I saw these lovely ladies with these beautiful costumes. So tell us a little bit, what, what's this all about? So we're an Australian swimwear brand called okay. Wild Orchid. All right. Yeah, so we do fashion shows, you can buy our bikinis, yep. and we're based up on the Gold Coast. Oh, cool. We all, yeah, just travel around Australia promoting today. We're here walking around in various crazy outfits, getting photos of people. Is Making this, everyone smile. Is this, is this the actual bikini that they sell? Yeah. Oh, bikini, oh, cool. accessories, accessories. Accessory. Rings. Rings are yeah, awesome. Headpieces, tribal, they do all sorts of stuff. It's really awesome. All yep. sizes, big ones, small ones, big boobs, little bum, anything. Well, Christmas definitely came early this year for us, didn't it? Now, Santa, a.k.a. Uh, Matt, is it? Yep. Okay, first of all, where's your beard? 
Uh, I had to shave it off. See, my Skerky kids, lucky there's not many of them around today. Now, serious question now, can you get me a Lamborghini for Christmas? I can give you anything you want. <laughs> I love him! This is the first time I've seen it actually full on. You know why she came here? She came here to buy sex toys with her boyfriend. She oh. seriously did. She told me all about them. She got the Lilo and the what else? Lilo? <laughs> what is the Lilo? Oh, uh, apparently, apparently it's just it's actually just right there. Okay. It's um this little thing that goes like that. All right. <laughs> do you do interstate bookings? Oh, if you if you can pay enough, then we can do enough. <laughs> now, have you both been around sort of hens parties? Yeah? yeah? You've done hens? <laughs> what is the weirdest thing you've ever seen in this place? Oh my god. Yep. Dude, I can answer that. Really? Weird. Oh, really? That's different. Okay, um, I don't want to be mean or rude or anything because yeah. I love trannies and stuff, but there's some really eye opener trannies here at, working across from me last expo. Yep. Also, there was um, <laughs> these old ladies walking around with one was like the Metro Dam or whatever it is. Oh, wow. And oh. the lady was walking around on, on a, like crawling around. Yep. And I was like, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> and so what's been like the best experience you've had at work? Um, it's pretty cool when you're not really famous but people still want your autograph. Oh wow. Just because you've got a good body or whatever. They still ask for your signature. What is the craziest thing and the most fun thing that you've heard about Melbourne? Oh, Casino. Yeah. <laughs> I've heard some fun stories. The cat. So, you can share that one. <laughs> so <laughs> what, you, the, depositing your money in the casino? Yeah, yeah, but more like, it's more like, yeah, donating it to the casino won't yeah. be winning much back, I don't think. You've been in Melbourne for how long now? Um, two, two days. Two, two days? days, yeah. And first time, or? First time, I'm actually from Christchurch. I've been in Aussie oh, for wow. six months, yeah. And have you explored Melbourne? Not yet. It's, uh, uh, we're going to explore tonight. Yeah. You'll be out tonight. Well, watch out for these hugs, because they can be dangerous. Wow, I've uh, just inherited a bit of colour in the room. Um, pink ladies. A bit of pink. That's, We're all in uh, pink. Very nice. And um, Ron Jeremy. I know, right? Like, talk about meeting someone with big. <laughs> I didn't want them to come out right as soon as I said I was like. <laughs> you said it now. So, yeah, it was so hard to get a minute with him. Like, he was just being grabbed from all directions. And, it was so you know, hard to get a minute with him. Oh, there's Wait. nothing that I can actually say that you can't twist into something noisy, right? Like, no, there's not nothing. Really I'm just going to stop it. Not <laughs> that's Tom for you. That's it. That's right. Now, Shana, welcome back. Thank you. I've had an awesome summer. We've been really busy with Media Strikes back okay. and um, getting out and about with the lovely weather that we've had. So, everyone that's not from Melbourne, don't think, yeah, we do have all those seasons in the one day. We've had an awesome summer. It's and pretty much just been summer, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah. it has. And we've got a lot to show you. So. Yep. And we've got Maritza back as well. Hi, guys. Thank you for <laughs> so having me. This I'm is excited uh, to be back. This is my first season on Media Strikes <laughs> back. And, um, here I am. Enjoying myself. First time in the studio. First time in the studio. Because of course you're doing the Vox Pops. Yes, I've been out in the streets doing Vox Pops and speaking to the people of Melbourne and um, we'll be catching up with some of that next week. <laughs> good stuff, good stuff. Well, um, next week also because over the summer we got a little bit sexier, didn't we? We, we kind of, we did some beach, <laughs> beach, uh, <laughs> photo shoots and um, we're just getting to that point and after meeting Ella as well and just... I don't know, I've got this idea, we're going to have a segment on the show about sex, dating and relationships. I think it needs it. What do you think? Oh, well, I think you're the right man for the job. I've heard, <laughs> I've heard some yeah. stories about you. Oh. No, hang on a sec. That's a bit much. No, just just so that we have a, a fresh outlook on that kind of, uh, you know, dating and, um, you know, who's right for who. It's good to give the other opposite sexes opinion and perspective yeah. of, you know, what they... A bit of a battle of the sexes. Yeah. Alright, good. We're going to do it next week, guys. We're going to start a new segment and, of course, we'll have Vox Pops back. And next week, we've Who also else? got Black Fox coming up, which is going to be a massive. And um, Black and White Lines. That's going to be pretty yeah. cool, too. Just come um, jump on our Facebook page or our web page and you can see what's coming up and what we've previously um, yeah, been on the show. And, yeah, keep up to date with Music Strikes Back. That's it. Check out our um, first two seasons. There's probably a couple of acts there, too. So that's all online. Check it all out. And until next week, um, see you guys at the beach. <laughs> See you later.